to talk to me about time because I think most of us would have never have thought twice about time until we started hearing about you know some of Einstein's theories and you started thinking okay well this doesn't happen and how does that not happen and time is actually a variable and it's not what we know of the clock ticking in the kitchen yeah is well that that's the big surprise is that time isn't what we thought it was you know, some people think time isn't real, and, and, and I like uh, I say in the book, well, to tell that to someone who missed the train and lost their job, you know, uh, job, job interview. But, you know, and ta- Einstein was asked about time, and he said, um, amusingly, uh, you know, time, well, you know, the relativity of time. And he said, well, if you're talking to a fascinating person, an hour is like a minute. If you're sitting on a stove, a minute is like an hour. But it's more than that. It turns out that time is very personal, and... Our perspective of time is not the perspective we always had, which is really what science teaches us, that our perspective of the world is very myopic. And, we, 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 and it's amazing that we've learned that, that your time and my time don't have to be the same. And then it comes up into the questions about time. You know, did the universe have a beginning? The real thing was time travel that fascinates people. The fact that we, when Einstein's, what Einstein demonstrated is that time and space are really different aspects of the same thing. They're tied together in what we now think of as a four-dimensional universe of time and space. But that immediately begs the following question. I can come to London and back, I can, which I'm going to do, which I've done this week, and I'll re- hopefully return home tomorrow. Um, so why can't I go to the future and back, or to the past and back? An interesting question. And it turns out general relativity allows that possibility in principle. Does it allow in practice? And then you have to ask all these questions. The answer is we don't know, okay? (laughs) There are lots of arguments for why we think it's probably unlikely, but we really don't know the answer. And the arguments that were given were, you know, uh, um, Stephen Hawking, my friend Stephen Hawking used to live near here, is is, uh, um, famous for having talked about time travel as impossible. And one of the ways he he said that is he, he, he actually had a party for time travelers from the future, and no one showed up. He announced a part, but but I, um, you know, he he said if 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 time travel were, were possible, we'd be inundated by tourists from the future, and I countered him by saying they all went to the 1960s and no one noticed. <laughs> that's pretty good. <laughs> but but so but the point is, but there are paradoxes, possible? right? I mean, yeah, that's I mean, more true. seriously, there are paradoxes. Yeah. What happened if you go back in time and kill your grandmother before your mother is born? Well, then your mother wouldn't be born. But then you wouldn't be born, and if you weren't born, then how did you go back? And the, the 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 gist of many fantastic science fiction stories is because of those paradoxes. Right. But just as we find the paradoxical, doesn't mean they're impossible. It may means we're think may, we're thinking about things the wrong way. The universe doesn't care what makes us comfortable, right. and so it's up to us to determine if the universe allows it. And it's an open question at the forefront of science. There are many good reasons, to, and I give them in the book, for thinking about why time travel is un- highly unlikely. But we can't say it's impossible. Okay. Um, when did the world start? I mean, that's something... 6,663, no. Um, well, we now, it's amazing that our universe, the universe in, of our experience, began, we can now date it reasonably precisely, precisely about 13.8 billion years ago plus or minus maybe a hundred million years, which, you know, in that sense is not large. But it's amazing that we can say that. I, I should say, when I began my career as a scientist, we knew the age of the universe to within a factor of two, say between 10 and 20 billion years and old. And I had a colleague when I taught at Yale, a very senior colleague, who said the universe will conspire so that we're never able to measure these fundamental quantities better than a factor of two. Because at the time, it always seemed that way. Every time someone came up with a method to do it, you'd should find there was some systematic uncertainty. Well, we have a new, a whole bunch of observables that I would maybe never have imagined we'd be able to have in the 1980, uh, the cosmic microwave background, which we can measure things to not to factor two, but to three decimal or four decimal place accuracy, has changed the picture of our universe and now tells us that we can not only determine with great accuracy what the age of the universe is, but the geometry of the universe, the fact that we live in a flat universe, which many of us suspected now to 1% accuracy, things that, uh, and then the greatest surprise of all, which one of my books is about, and I'm happy to say we anticipated in my research uh, 25 years ago, is the fact that the expansion of the universe is speeding up, not slowing down, that it's dominated, the energy of the universe is dominated by the energy of empty space, you take all the particles and radiation away and there's nothing there, 
but it weighs something. What the hell is that all about? We don't it? know. It's the biggest mystery in science, which makes it ex even more exciting. That was one of your big breakthroughs when you yeah, observed yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we pr proposed that that was the case. I didn't really believe it when I proposed it. I, what I did do was- it makes no sense. There's nothing there. It makes no sense. So how could there be energy there? It, it makes no sense, absolutely. But what we did do was analyze the existing data of cosmology in 1995 and show that all the data did not, did not, was not consistent unless you gave space energy. And I proposed that because that was the conclusion that we drew. But I, in, if, but I expected that the answer was that some of the data was wrong. I was really suggesting that maybe some of the data was wrong. It turned out to be exactly right. They discovered it was exactly right. The people who discovered it was exactly right won the Nobel Prize for it. And because and, and, it was so surprising that, that, you know, why should empty space have energy? It's the biggest mystery in fundamental science. And, uh, and that's what, that I've spent a lot of my time thinking about it. And it's nice not to know the answer. It's, it's kind of permanent job security in a way, right? <laughs> so you kind of embrace that stuff. Yeah, of course, I embrace, it, you know, I, I'm a, I like to say I wake up every day, I'm surprised if I'm not surprised. If I'm not surprised, it's not a good day. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who wanna join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late. Next year's gonna be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now people are being kept in the dark, they're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that wanna join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. Double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. So let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. 
Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?